Hi class. Uh, in this lecture, we want to conclude our study in chapter 12 talking about uh, scatter plots, correlation, and regression rates. Now, as I go through this lecture, um, you're going to notice that um, the lecture shows you how to do a lot of calculations by hand. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to use your graphing calculator to um, get the same solutions much, much easier. So as we go through the problems, um, pause the video and have your graphing calculator handy. Okay, so first off, uh, some learning objectives. The first thing I want to talk about is what we call a scatter plot. So making a scatter plot from a table of data items. I want to then interpret information given in that scatter plot. I want to compute what's called the correlation coefficient. Okay, um, this is going to be the first time we use our calculator to help us do something very, very complicated. Um, I want to write the equation of what we call a regression line. And then finally, I want to use the samples correlation coefficient to determine whether there is a correlation in a population. Okay, so let's start first with what a scatter plot is. So all a scatter plot is is a collection of data points where one data point is per person or object. Okay, so what this can be used to determine whether two quantitative variables are related. All right, so we're going to have I'll give you a table of data with the scatter plot, and actually the table of data is going to have two variables on it. Okay, but then what we're going to do is once we have the two variables, we're going to plot them so you see, only see a single point for each variable. It'll make sense when we go through it. So correlation. So what this is talks about is that when there's correlation, there's a clear relationship between two quantities. right? So we use this to determine if there's a relationship between two variables. And if so, we talk about the strength and direction of that relationship. Right, let me give you an example here about this scatter plot. Okay, So I've got this table here. All right, and what it has is it has years of education. So like um, number of years that the person's been in school, like this is a high school graduate, all the way to 16 years of school, like 12 years as a high school, 16 years as they're a college graduate. And they're given this test, okay? And it's a prejudice test of some type. And what we're assuming is, what we're seeing here is that the more years of education somebody has, the less likely they're to exhibit prejudice. Okay, so the scatter plot here shows a downward trend among the data points, right? With some exceptions. But what we're seeing here is people with increased education tend to have a lower score on the test measuring their prejudice. Okay, so this is what a scatter plot looks like. I've got two variables here. I've got the years of education for the individual. That's my X variable. So that goes along the horizontal axis. And then I've got their corresponding score on this prejudice exam from 1 to 10 on the Y axis. So I'm just going to plot these as ordered pairs. Now, let me show you how to use your um, graphing calculator for this. Okay. So you're going to load up your graphing calculator, and you're going to want to input data into it. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit your stat button, and under number one, you want to edit some lists. Under L1, always goes the X variable. 12, 5, 14, 13, I'm just going in a row, 8, 10, 16, 11, 12, and then 4. And then what happens in L2, when you scroll over to L2, you're going to put the corresponding Y variables. Now, they must be paired, so meaning the 12 must be right next to the 1. So 1, so you've got to put it in, in, in the order that it's given to you. 1, 7, 2, 3, 5, 4, 1, 2, 3, and then finally 10. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is this is scatter plot is a statistical plot. So you're going to hit second function on your calculator, and under the y equals it'll be second function stat plot. You will see plot 1 dot 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 off. So just hit enter. And all you want to do is turn turn it on right here. Hit enter again. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to hit zoom. And you're going to scroll down till you see this thing called zoom stat. Zoom stat. And look, you can see that this scatter plot is exactly what we're seeing here. All right? A little bit, a little bit different, you know scale look to it but it's roughly the same exact thing that you're seeing all right and what this is telling me is there's a downward trend in the data meaning 
as years of education increases, this person score on a prejudice exam decreases, right? There's a kind of like a negative relationship between the variables. All right, so here's the thing. Although the scatter plot shows a correlation between education and prejudice, right, that negative one, that negative relationship, we cannot conclude that increased education causes a person's level of prejudice to decrease, right? This could be the correlation, could be simply coincidence. Education usually involves classrooms with a variety of different kinds of people, so increased exposure to diversity in the classroom might be an underlying cause, so not the years of education, but just being exposed to it. And then finally, education requires people to look at new ideas and see things in different ways, thus education causes one to be more tolerant, less prejudice. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to talk about what's called a um, regression. So a regression line is a line that best fits the data. So it's kind of like if you were to look at this trend in the scatter plot, if I could fit the data with a um, with a line that goes through it, it fits the data well. We want to kind of model the data. All right, that's one thing. And then the next thing we want to talk about is what's called the correlation coefficient. And this correlation coefficient is defined by the letter R. So whenever you see the lowercase r, that's the correlation coefficient. And this is a measure that is used to describe the strength and direction of a relationship between variables, the data value line on roughly a near a line. So the relationship is what we call positively correlated if they tend to increase or decrease together, okay, meaning they move in the same direction together, or negatively correlated if one variable tends to decrease while the other one increases, which is what we're seeing with this years of education and prejudice score. All right, so um, we have something called perfect positive correlation. This is which all data points lie precisely on a straight line that rises from left to right, right? Or perfect negative correlation, which all points um, in the scatter plot lie precisely on a line as it falls left to right. And if we look at our graph here, they don't fall perfectly on a line, but there's still a trend to it. So the R here, what we're seeing with this correlation coefficient R, is what it does is it measures the strength of a linear relationship between the variables. All right, so the value of R, this linear correlation coefficient, will always be between one and negative one. It will never be a different value. So when R is equal to one, this correlation coefficient, it follows this straight perfect line like this, right? If R is close to say closer to one, like 0 0.8, it, you can still see the trend, but the data points are getting spread out. If R is equal to 0 0.3, you can still see a kind of a trend, but the data is still very spread out. Here is something where R is equal to zero, where there's no linear relationship between the variable. And you see the same thing with the negative value. So here's negative 0 0.3, negative 0.8, you're getting closer to a negative one straight line. And negative one, you see have this perfect downward sloping line. Okay. The formula for calculating this, right, the correlation coefficient, is given by this crazy formula here, okay? So I'm not even going to read through it because I want to show you how to use your graphing calculator to find R. So going through the formula here, here's what all these parts in the formula represent, right? And what I want to do is take my years of education related to prejudice and find the value of the linear correlation coefficient. All right, so you can follow through in the slides and see how they do all this to get R is equal to negative 0 0.92. All right, but I want to show you how to use your graphing calculator to very, very easily do this. All right, the first thing you're going to have to have is you're going to have to have the data plugged in your calculator as so. The next thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to hit second function and then go to catalog, second function catalog. You're going to hit the X inverse button right here, and you're going to scroll down till you see something called diagnostic on. Diagnostic on. You're going to hit enter. You're just going to turn it on like this. All right. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go back and hit the stat button again. You're going to go over to calc. You want this option number four. 
called linreg and then in parentheses ax plus b. I'm going to go down to this. Now, if you have a TI-84 or higher, you're just going to have to hit enter, enter, and go down to hit calculate. The TI-83, you just hit enter here. And you see all this spit out here from what this tells you. If you look down, the last thing it says R is equal to negative 0.92. Look at that. So much easier than following through all this crazy formula here. All right, so your calculator did that very, very quickly. So I encourage you to go back and um, you look at this again, like watch the video to see how I did this. All right, so that R is really close to negative one. What that means is that there is a negative linear relationship between the two variables. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to find a line that fits the data really well. All right, so an aggression line is given by Y. Well, remember what Y is. It was a score on the prejudice exam. is equal to the slope times the X variable, which is the years of education, plus some y-intercept. Okay, so the formula for this, to find the slope and the y-intercept, is given by this crazy formula again as well. Well, you know what? We, um, we're we going to use our calculator to do this. So you can see here that, just following the formula, it's telling me that the slope is negative 0 0.69, and the y-intercept b is 11.05. Well, if you look back at your calculator here, look at this. A is equal to negative 0.69 when I round it. And this is going to be off a little bit, okay, when, when you use your calculator. But your calculator will give you a really close enough value, saying B, the slope is 11.01. .01. Here we're getting 11.05 because we're rounding everything in the previous step. And you use that to find the equation, all right? So this is what we're saying. This equation here, y is equal to negative 0.69x plus 11.05, models the data really well. Let me show you that. So I'm going to hit y equals in my calculator. So y is equal to negative 0.69 times my variable plus 11.05. Hit enter. Now watch what happens when I hit the graph button. Look at how well this line, this equation, models the data or shows the trend in the data. And that's the whole point of this regression line right here. All right, moving on. Um, so what we want to talk now about is if there's, you can conclude that there's definite correlations or relationship between the two variables. All right, so in the previous example, we computed r is equal to negative 0.92 for a sample size n equal to 10. So can we conclude that there is a negative correlation between education and prejudice in the population? Well, first, begin by taking the absolute value of the calculated correlation coefficient. So the absolute value of negative 0.92 is positive 0.92. Then what you have to do is you look at this table. Okay, you find this table 12.18 is in your textbook. Okay, go down to n, find 10, and you have two values here. You have 0 0.632 and then a corresponding 0 0.765. All right. If your value of your correlation coefficient, it, the absolute value of it, is greater than both these numbers, okay, which it is because 0 0.92 is greater than this and greater than this, we can con definitely conclude that there is a correlation, all right, that it does exist between this education and prejudice in the general population, meaning the more education you have, the less prejudice you are likely to um, show or exhibit. Thank you, class.